A welcome to my audience, and a congratulations on finding this video. You're about to take off on a 10 minute journey through making your first abstract animated GIF with Blender. The end product can be used for internet clout, use it to bolster your new media portfolio, turn it into an NFT, or you can do nothing with it. That's a perfectly reasonable option as well. This beautiful undulating image you're looking at right now is what you'll be learning to make in this video. So without further ado, let's open up Blender and make our animated GIF goals and dreams a virtual reality. Now to start working on our animated GIF, we're going to open up Blender to a new project. Delete that pesky default cube and shift A to add a plane into our scene. Next, we tab into edit mode and press control E to subdivide our plane. Without subdivisions, the wave motion won't work. So let's set the subdivisions to about 10 or so. Now in the properties panel, we want to add a wave modifier to our plane. Tab into object mode and head over to the wrench icon to add a modifier. Click the wave modifier and press play to check out the default wave animation. Pretty cool looking, right? So our end product is going to be a seamlessly animated GIF. And what do I mean when I say seamless? Well, right now, if we set the frame output of our wave motion to some arbitrary number, you may notice a jitter. That's because the wave modifier isn't offset correctly. This will result in an end product that isn't seamless. A GIF that may be a bit jarring and won't give off the effect of something that's looping infinitely. In order to make our GIF seamless, we'll set the frame output to 60 on the top of the timeline and we'll lower the speed in the time of the wave modifier to 0.1. We'll also offset the time of the modifier by negative 50. Now, when we play the animation back, we'll have 60 frames of seamless wave motion. Now, this alone may be abstract enough for some normies out there, but we wanna take it a step further and make our plane into a more interesting abstract geometric shape. To do this, we'll use the instancing feature of Blender. In our properties panel, we can navigate to the object properties by clicking this orange box icon. Make sure that the plane is selected in the outliner and expand the instancing tab where we can select to instance our plane by either vertices or faces. For this project, we'll select vertices, but feel free to play around with these options as they give equally abstract and cool results. Here we also have the option to toggle the visibility of our instancer, the plane, in the viewport and in our final render. We'll come back here, but first let's make an object to use for the instancing. Back in our viewport, press Shift A to add a meta ball to our scene. Meta balls are these weird built in objects that Blender has been pushing on us for a while now. Upon adding this object, you may realize that it's a bit big. We can fix this by scaling up our plane using the S shortcut and we can move the plane and the meta ball around our scene by pressing G and either free moving them throughout the viewport or holding down the middle mouse button to move them along an axis. Off to the side, we can see why meta balls are a good choice for an abstract geometry. When meta balls collide with each other, they morph together, creating compound shapes that are gooey and have an awesome tactile feel to them. Now in our outline, select the plane and then the meta ball by holding shift or control. And then in the viewport, press control P to parent the meta ball to the plane. Since we've already set up the instancing properties of the plane, the meta ball should instance itself across the plane's vertices. How cool is that? Of course, you can take a moment to admire the abstract art that you've just created. Take notice of how our objects have changed in the outliner. Meta ball looks as if it's disappeared from the outliner completely, but it's just childed within the plane. We can now go into the plane's object properties and untick the viewport and render show instancer options. This will hide the plane so we won't be distracted by the two shapes being in our scene. 
Back in the wave modifier, we can play around with the different motion settings until we're happy with the outcome of our shape. We can press zero on the numpad to switch into camera view and readjust our camera to align to a view where we can see our entire shape. In the viewport, you can move around to a desired view and press Ctrl Alt Zero to align the camera to your view. In the camera settings in the properties panel, expand the film tab and choose transparent. In render view, we can now see that our render will be transparent. This is great for animated GIF stickers. From rendered view, you may also notice the lighting is a bit off. You can shift D to duplicate a few new lights into our scene and play around with color and power settings to really make our render pop. Another thing we can do to spice up our scene is change the material on our meta ball. With our meta ball selected, we can go to the shading tab, add a new material to our meta ball, and shift A to generate a color ramp node as well as a noise node. Connect the color ramps color to our base color and the noise texture factor to the color ramps factor. Add colors to the color ramp node to your heart's delight and play with the settings in the noise texture until the look is to your liking. We can also pull up the timeline in our shading tab and scrub to the beginning of our scene. In our noise texture, we can hover over any of the parameters and press I to create a keyframe. Scrub to the end of our 60 frames and press I again. Now scrub to the middle of our timeline and change the parameters of the noise texture. Press I to key in the noise texture animation and now our meta ball has an animated texture effect. Back in our layout, everything's looking good, but the colored lighting sort of masks the noise texture animation. After tweaking the lighting a bit, I go into my render settings and pick an output path for my PNG sequence. Then in the top nav bar, click render and render animation and wait for your 60 frame PNG sequence to render out. Once your PNG sequence is finished rendering, head on over to gifmaker.me and upload the PNG sequence by shift selecting the output from the folder you rendered to. Once it's done uploading, change the animation speed to something like 50 milliseconds and press the create gif animation button. This may take a while to generate the gif. Once it's done, press download gif and there you have it your first abstract animated GIF sticker. And we did it all in under 10 minutes. Probably, maybe not. It's okay to take your time with these things. You're doing great. Stay tuned for more videos in the Blender Foundation series. And as always, thanks for watching.